This is a Edelbrock Fort 1409, I think, uh, marine carburetor. It's in my boat. I've had it for many years. I'm going to try to do a dummy's guide to um, dealing with some of the issues and sort of cleaning it out, rebuilding it, whatever. Uh, it's more theory op of operation, so hopefully um, it helps somebody else. I'm doing it so I don't forget every time I take this thing apart how it works. Um, your top, I have my top over here. Um, when you want to take this thing apart, if you can, shut off your fuel. If you have a like a fuel switch and you can shut it off, um, then you can run your um, your bowls, your fuel bowls dry, um, so that you don't have a bunch of fuel to deal with in here. Um, once your engine sort of stops running, then take it apart. Uh, be careful when you take it apart not to lose any of these little thingies, because that one's not so little, but these are the, the little clips that hold. Um, the linkages into the various little levers and stuff. Um, I would hate to lose one of those, period. Um, but especially like if you dropped it into your manifold, that probably wouldn't be very good. So be very careful not to drop those. Um, uh, on your lid here, the things of interest are your accelerator pump, um, this diaphragm, the blue part, sometimes wears out. I've had to replace mine. Um, the way that it works is when you give your engine throttle off of idle, it pushes that plunger into there, which pushes fuel into here, and it squirts fuel out of the two little jet deals. So if you have like a flat spot when you hit, give it throttle and it doesn't go, it's possible one of these is, is screwed up. Also, it makes it hard to start if, if fuel's not coming out of these. Right now I have one that, that worked and one that didn't. Um, so you can pull it apart. Inside there, there's a little, um, I think it's a little um, check ball maybe or something. I forget. I don't usually take that apart. Um, check the manual. I think there's a ball, a check ball and a little, little needle or something in there. Uh, this guy just has a hole and then the two nozzles. If you want to clean them out, you can spray some carb cleaner or stick a, a needle in there or something. Um, I have these uh, little guitar strings, basically, is what they are, but they're pointy. Um, they're for cleaning out 3D printer nozzles. Um, oh, you can barely see that, but it's like basically just a guitar string. If you have guitar strings, that would be a good thing to use to clean this stuff out with. Um, so you can stick this into the the little nozzles um, right here and get any gunk out of them. In theory, you could probably do it with it on here, maybe, um, in a pinch, but it might just lodge a rock back and then a little piece of gummed up fuel back and then it might get stuck again. So you can take it off with just two screws. Once you get the lid off it makes sense to do. Uh, so that is the accelerator pump. These guys are your fuel floats. Um, the way they work is as, as your, see if this one will work, oh shoot there it went too much. Um, so as your fuel pump pumps up the fuel bowl area, the float floats up, and then you can see the little needle that moves in the back of there. As that goes up to the top, it'll block the, the port that the fuel flows out of. So the fuel fills your bowls through the back, back here. And then as your carb uses the fuel, it opens up the valve and closes the valve just based on this thing floating. I've heard of these getting full of fuel and then not working correctly. That's something to check right when you pull this off. If this thing's one of them's heavy and one's not, that would be a problem. Um, one thing you got to be careful of is when they get all the way open and your that thing, your needle falls all the way down. They won't close if you pull on this. You're going to bend it and then it'll be out of whack. Um, so you kind of have to like flip it over and shake it around and then you can get it. So when you're putting this back together, you kind of have to hold these up because otherwise they'll fall down and then you won't be able to get your lid back on the carb. That's a little hint. Um, 
So that's that, and these just bend. Um, that's how you adjust the height of them. Uh, they should be, I think it was 7 16 or something when they're down, and there's some spec for when they're up, but you just kind of bend the tab right there to make the adjustment. Um, if you want to take this off, this just this bar just pushes out, and then you can get the take out the needle and check it out. Um, I haven't had an issue with those though. I don't think uh, these guys here are your main jet metering rods. The main jet is right there at the bottom, that brass thing, right there. These rods go in there, and they have like a plunger behind here that they're attached to. You can actually pull them out and swap with different ones or check them out from the, the top with that little screw and plate. Um, when you pull them off, or I mean, uh, when you pull that plate off, you can take the whole plunger and rod out through the top. Uh, it might help to do that when you want to put the top back on because these rods have to get into those holes and if they're not then the top won't go all the way on you kind of have to futz with it. Um, I can usually get it on just by jiggling stuff around so I am going to leave them on this time hopefully. Uh, but the way that this works is it's on a spring and there's a plunger that's behind this hole which is connected to that hole which goes down to your intake manifold so there's vacuum on that vacuum is high at idle so it pulls this thing up when it's pulled up it goes further into the jet and it gets bigger as it goes further into the jet so at idle it's pulled up you don't have a lot of uh, you have a lot of restriction you don't have a lot of uh, space for fuel to go through the jet as it as you get on the throttle and the the vacuum from the intake manifold decreases here it decreases because you're opening big holes, your throttle blades are opening big holes where it's sucking, instead of sucking all the air through all the little holes, it's going to suck all the air through these holes with fuel to make your engine run, and then the vacuum on these other little ports is not going to be as high. So higher throttle, low throttle, lots of vacuum, higher throttle, less vacuum, and these jets move out of the main, sorry, metering rods move out of the main jets, and that's going to make more room in the main jets for fuel to go through. Uh, that's it for the lid, I think. So, the actual operation of this thing, the circuits, when you're idling, there's a little hole right below your, um, your throttle blade down there, and so you've got a lot, everything's closed, so the engine pistons are moving and they're sucking a lot of air into this intake. So that air gets sucked, um, or that vacuum gets sucks through this port which is adjusted by the the fuel um uh, sorry idle air screw or idle i guess it's not technically air it's the idle screw um it adjusts how much air and fuel goes through so um suck through this um variable spot um it sucks from up here and it's the uh, that one to the right of my finger, sort of. It's like a half circle almost. It heads down that way. So, vacuum sucks through this, sucks from this, which comes from uh, this guy. Um, is that right? Yeah. It comes from this round hole, which is attached to this brass. Um, pickup which is in that main well that gets fuel from the main jet so the fuels path is from the bowl through the metering rod and main jet to this little area the diamond hole big hole there gets sucked up through this little brass jet <coughs> and then it goes <coughs> excuse me through the brass jet it goes into the half circle down there and underneath the blade. It also gets air mixed in on its way through this brass uh, uh, air bleed right here. It's behind the little brass jet and also the hole up here. So that is the idle circuit. Um, if you have problems with idle, most likely it's a, some gunked up fuel and there's a little rock that got stuck in the small 
brass jet down here or pickup tube, whatever the hell that thing's called. So that's what I see most of the time with mine. If I have problems with idle, it happens almost every year. It's because I don't start my boat all the time and it sits and then a little few, it'll almost, it'll usually run okay when I first start it. And then after a trip or two, I'll get a little rock picked up in the idle, idle, uh, pickup. So, um, that's most likely what's going on if there's an idle problem. Otherwise, um, it could be this guy here, which is a decent size opening. Um, or this guy here, which is also a decent size opening, but again, most likely there. Um, that's idle. The When you go off idle, you're going to get some fuel squirting through these when you move the throttle, and then it moves to your primary main jets, which are um, this big brass guy in here. So as you start sucking a bunch of air through here, it's going to suck out of the big jet fuel and air that comes from this big brass tube which is in the same same fuel uh, reservoir spot whatever that's called I forget now what that's called there's a name for it I'll probably think of it anyways um, fuel comes through the big brass tube that's brought from the bowl through the main jet metering rod into this um, god what is that thing called whatever <laughs> um, goes through the big brass tube here and its air bleed is this brass tube on the top so fuel comes up here gets mixed with um, air that comes through there and the air actually goes down and mixes with the fuel in this little hole um, right there and then on the fuel's way up it pulls some air through there and then comes out the, the nozzle so that's kind of a small hole. I could see that getting clogged. I don't know if I've actually had it happen or not. Um, but that's a potential if you have problems with like, um, I don't know, low, medium throttle. Um, but that's your main, primary main uh, side. The secondary main jet side is, there's your uh, main jet right there. So the fuel bowl. Um, I'm not sure what this little restrictor thing does, just something to do with fuel getting over to that side or not. When it gets low, I don't know. Oh, actually, that's the, um, maybe it has to do with the fuel float, actually, because that's kind of where the fuel, um, yeah, because there's space below it. I don't know what this thing does. It may, may have to do with keeping the fuel float aligned or something. Um, but that jet is just a fixed jet. It lets fuel fill um, these two areas here, um, and then the circuit for the fuel over here is this blade, air blade doodad, there's a, a throttle blade down below, and this is just air, it's just on a weight. So sometimes I, I feel like this got gunked up one time, you gotta make sure this moves pretty easily. Um, the idea is, just like the accelerator pump, sort of helps you transition between idle and your main side. This thing helps you transition between the main side and the secondary side. And it does that by, when it's all the way this way, the air that starts rushing through here is not enough to pull fuel through these big, huge nozzles up here. So it, they put this thing in, and it rushes by the edge of it, which pulls fuel and air out of this little guy on the side. And the little guy is connected to, I don't know why it has a hole down here, that doesn't seem to go to anything, but it's connected to this small brass nozzle. So the transition to secondaries is fuel comes through the fixed secondary jet to this spot here, up through the small brass nozzle and then it gets air there's an air bleed it's that little baby hole right there um, that is not this big one the one that you can still see that one that is where the air comes in for the transition um, it comes in right there and it somehow gets over and comes out of this little orifice right there that's the transition and then once enough airs 
coming through here and this thing kind of moves out of the way, it won't suck it through there anymore. It will um, suck air through the main um, secondary main nozzles um, and those are fed by this big brass tube and the air bleed is right there. So air comes in there, fuel comes through here, and then it comes out of these guys. Um, I think that's all that I know about this system. What did I forget? I think I said when you put it back together, be careful of the metering rods, not to bend them and screw them up. I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully it helps somebody. Hopefully I don't have to relearn it every year now. <laughs>